snow and moss and grease and shit. Let's take out a 200 horsepower superbike. I'm so retarded. I'd like to extend an enormous thank you to the people at Barnstormer BMW in Alton, Hampshire. If it wasn't for their cooperation, I never would have been able to make this video. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with this model, this is the brand new S1000RR from BMW. It features electronic suspension, cruise control, traction control, ABS, far more electronics that you can shake a stick at, including heated grips. It's an incredible machine. Let's get stuck in. One of the scary things about this bike is uh, the speed you're going, man. You really don't you don't realize just how quick you're traveling. It's unreal. It honestly doesn't feel any bigger than my old 600 RR. It really doesn't. It feels just as small, just as nimble. And I think what surprises me about it even more is just how relaxed it feels. It's just going for a jog. I'm not even I'm not even stretching its legs. One of the more impressive things I found as well so far is the fact that it's soaking up the bumps so well. Notorious kind of UK country roads, they're a little bit bumpy, there's your pothole here and there. It's soaking them up, which is something I would expect from a, a, a naked bike, a comfy naked bike like my Street Triple. Not something I'd expect from a sport bike at all. Look at all these buttons, there are so many buttons, I feel like I'm looking at R2-D2's genitals, man. So unbelievably easy to ride. I thought it would require some work. It's like the equivalent of a Mitsubishi Evo. It, it, it's doing everything for me. I almost feel like I'm letting it down by being who I am. I feel like it's got my back, you know? It's like a good body my wingman. It's got me should anything go wrong. Before jumping on BMW's latest 1000cc superbike, I had some expectations in mind. I thought it was going to be reasonably large, somewhat heavy, a little bit complicated, maybe confusing, slightly intimidating, but it was absolutely none of those things. This is the first time I've ridden an S1000RR and I'm so glad that it was the 2015 model. This bike is so smooth and so comfortable, so calm, collected and relaxed, I feel like I could ride it with my eyes closed. It's such a shame that on this test ride I was only able to scratch the surface. This bike wasn't run in yet and it still had an 8000 RPM limit, so I couldn't stretch its legs as much as I would have liked to. 
but initial impressions are extremely, extremely good. Let's have a look at it, shall we? One thing I want to point out is how gorgeous the milling marks are on the, uh, the yoke here. Beautiful. The engineering in this bike is really quite something. The welds on the swing arm, just the beefiness of it, the thickness of it. Absolutely gorgeous. I feel like it's been put together by people who give a shit. Not just quickly thrown together by someone who's clock watching all day. It's like five to five. He doesn't really give a shit anymore. He's just half tightening bolts. I feel like the guy who built this tightens it up, takes a step back and goes, yeah. It's really quite a marvel, but it is not perfect. I do have a criticism. And one of the things that I don't like about it is the spongy feel of the shifter. Whether you're changing up a gear or down a gear, you just kind of feel like you're, you're stepping on a pie or something. There's no like haptic feedback. It's not like click, 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 click. It's just kind of pressing down gently. It feels like you're pushing your thumb into the palm of your hand or something. It's soft and spongy and I really don't like that. I don't like that at all. If that was a nice solid clunk, a real kind of yeah, then perfect. Considering it's built to be fast, it does an amazing job of everything else. It's, it's a rather impressive all-rounder from what I've experienced so far. But I'm not going to lie, I'd love to have one for longer and I'd love to have one back on the Isle of Wight where the roads are especially shit and the towns are, are small and narrow. Um, I'd really like to give it a try, know how it behaves in my home environment. If it excelled there, would I buy one of these? Yes. Yes, I would. Riding over a cattle grid on a sports bike should make me impotent. It should ruin my penis. But it doesn't. It just massages it. Impressive for a sport bike. That pop. So as you can imagine, I'm a little disappointed that I can't put this bike through its paces in terms of performance. However, on the flip side, a bike like this has more performance than you're ever going to need on the road. Let's be honest, 200 horsepower is just insanity. But a pleasant discovery I have made while riding this bike today is that if you want to just cruise around on it quite easily, comfortably, with no pressure, you certainly can. Very, very easy to ride. Very, very easy. I think almost any novice really could jump on this and feel uh, perfectly comfortable. I think you'd kill yourself on it, but you'd be comfortable while you did it. The acceleration is incredible. It's not snappy, it's just a surge of power. It's just smooth, it just kind of wafts you away. Is this a bike I could see myself riding every day? At this point, I don't know. I would need to have it for longer than a few hours and I would need to commute to work. Rush hour traffic, bit of stress, bit of pressure, bit of filtering, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the acceleration's insane. I wish I could give you an idea of what it's, what it's actually like because I'm really, I'm only just getting into the power. I'm only just starting to hit the point where the bike's really starting to pick up and then I have to change gear because of the 8,000 RPM rev limit. Let's try this traction control. Oh, traction control. Oh, that's amazeballs. Every bike needs that. How do I slow it down? I like that, okay. That's amazing. I can make it slower or faster. Oh my... God, that's just beautiful. Just literally tap the brakes and all the throttle, or the clutch, touch anything, actually touch yourself, and the bike starts to slow down. I've got to be honest though, I mean, and it's really, really picky. Like, really picky. I hate that I don't have a fuel gauge. 
And considering the amount of electronics crammed into this thing, is it really, you know, is it really that much to ask to have a fuel gauge on this? I'm pretty sure the old Beamer had a fuel gauge. In fact, I'm certain it did. It's not a deal breaker. I would get over it pretty quickly. But uh, I just, I like knowing how much fuel I have. Call me crazy. In the short amount of time that I spent with the new S1000RR, I learned that BMW have created a 1000cc 200 horsepower weapon that's really not scary. It's so easy to ride and it's so tame when you want it to be. I feel like this bike could be a great solution for people who want on one hand an utterly crazy track weapon that turns back time when you accelerate, that you get younger as you ride it as well as having something that they can quite comfortably commute to work on in the morning. I sincerely hope that I get to spend more time with this bike and explore its capabilities in a much greater depth. <laughs> Cliff job, I'm awake! Oh, hey, how's it going, Barnstormer people? Thanks for lending me that S1000. I slammed it into a f***ing VW.